So welcome back everybody. We are here again with Brian, our batch of the month for July, and they have switched to brown liquor now. <laughs> See, we said we weren't going to even comment on that. Ran out of vodka, so we got some brown liquor now. But uh, we were about to, to Juan was about to hit on some um, some real good questions here, and I'm anxious to get to them. So go ahead. Juan. Yes. So I wanted to talk to us a little bit about what it was like growing up without a father in present. Or, or your father, not a father being presence, because I feel like there's a difference. At least for me, it was not having your father around. I don't honestly think I recognized it until I was older. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was intermittently in and out, but more out than in, uh, just based on a lot of things he had going on in his personal life. Mm -hmm. And I, I always told myself and combat myself with it. It didn't matter. It didn't really affect me. But the older I get, I see the ramifications of him not being there. Mm -hmm. And I think that we talked about earlier about like validation earlier on. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of my seeking validation early on was because of that lack of male presence right. in my life. So, so <clears throat> now at 31, almost 32, <laughs> how, how does that show up? How does it show up? I think that it shows up better today than it did. I think it's all about the the journey. I think that it was a lot worse when I was younger because I was not my best representation of myself. So tell us about that journey. How did you, like once you began to realize the ramifications of the lack of that fatherly presence in your life, what, what, what emotions did that stir up? You know, how did you deal with it? And, and how did you heal from it? I think it brought up anger, a lot of hurt, a little bit of shame as on why wasn't I good enough? Mm -hmm. Why weren't you there? What did right. I do wrong? You know, but then I had to ultimately recognize that it had nothing to do with me. And I think part of the reason why I became earlier on, because even before my brother lived with me, I was very active, mm -hmm. was I put all of that energy into my brother. Right. All that hurt, all that anger, all that shame. I said, I don't ever want my brother to feel that same way. So that I tried to do all I could to kind of shield him. So although his, his father is intermittently in his life, mm -hmm. I want him to always say, I had someone there that, that cared about me. So you feel like your brother, you know, taking in your brother possibly helped you heal your own wounds with your, your father? I think it, it did. Okay. I think it helped me to understand that it's okay. Mm -hmm. Not that it's ideal not to have your father, but it's okay. Right. And you can have a unit around you that can give you that same love and nurture that you need, and it doesn't have to be a father. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the fact that you did not grow up with your father, do you feel like it has caused issues within you and in relationship, in your past relationships? I think it's helped. Okay. I think this, that sense of abandonment and that sense of not wanting others to feel that same way has helped me have long-term relationships. I'm always in it to win it. Like, we may not ever make it to the finish line, but that's always my goal because I know it's so easy to walk away when times get hard mm -hmm. or when things don't work out. So I try to work things out even harder in relationships, sometimes to my detriment. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It, it sounds like sometimes you may stay on this longer than you need to be. Right. But relationships to me are all about ebb and flow. You love each other, it's really high, and then you can't stand each other, it's really low. <laughs> but, you know, so I'm like, okay. Just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I love you today, bro. I just try to, we have to wait out the bad period and hope that it will get better. And But we'll still be wise enough to say, you know what, it's not going to, and no one get off the ride. And that doesn't make a relationship a failure. You know, we all, very rarely we meet our first person and we're with them for the rest of our lives. But what we do is we date around, we get in relationships, and now we are to a point where we can be prepared for who we are supposed to be with for the rest of our lives. So people place too much stock in being with people forever, I think. I mean, I think Brian summed it up perfectly earlier when he said, you know, each one of his relationships prepared him mm -hmm. for the next. You know, so it's, it's, you're learning, you're growing, you're growing, and you're maturing. 
and you're getting older and older and 31, 32. Better, better, better and better yeah. and better. Better and better and better. better. So it's like, it is. after at the end of a relationship, you should almost celebrate like, thank you. I got another one under my belt. I'm stronger now. I. As time goes on, you realize what you do and don't want. You realize more about yourself, and that's the purpose of a relationship. So, absolutely. I don't know about celebrate. I think it depends on how the relationship ended. Because Even if you did me wrong and you broke my heart, I don't want to know that you're celebrating about the fact that we're not together anymore. Well, you can celebrate not so much as throwing a party, right? But realizing that this is a step In towards the growth, right? And realizing the the lessons and the growth and being grateful for that. I think right. that's the celebration for right. me, at least, is the. And then, <laughs> those marks and those mouse. And you want to celebrate my slashing his tires and breaking out his windows? <laughs> Don't slash <laughs> <No. my> tires. <laughs> Please. Absolutely no. not. We're not going there. So, Brian, one of the questions I always like to ask mm -hmm. our bachelor. The big over. question. The big question. Mm -hmm. I always like to ask, what is your biggest insecurity? My biggest insecurity is failure. Okay. Um, I guess to make myself vulnerable, like I said, I moved here fairly young and I was the one my family, everyone says, going to be so successful, going to have all, no pressure. These, all these degrees, yeah. all these accolades, and I went a different direction. And so I came here and I've had some pretty low periods, you know, I've been homeless before, I've been unemployed before, I've had a lot of different things throughout my journey. Mm -hmm. But I've always felt that pressure of other people on my weight, on my on my shoulders. So I think I give myself a really hard time about being what I see as successful. And sometimes I think it's hurt me mm -hmm. because I put so much pressure on myself that's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. And my measure of success is always 20 degrees higher than everyone else's. Right. And I've learned to try to balance that out and say, you know what, really challenge myself to say, are you doing this for you or are you doing this for other people? And right. if it's for other people, you need to shift and refocus right. that energy. That's, that's some great advice. That is good. good. I hope everyone can receive that. It's hard though. <clears throat> it's, hard. It, it's, it's, it's very difficult, um, especially when you have your entire family, which I'm sure a lot of us, especially in the gay community, or as gay men, Particularly, I can't speak from the lesbian perspective. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you are the different one growing up, so everyone looks at you like, oh, you're, you're gonna soar. And they put all of these expectations and pressure on you, and then it's, it's kind of unfair, you know, because you grow up with all that pressure, and it, you become you become less important and the family takes over your life. You know what I think was harder for me? That's how my experience was. I, I was don't want to speak on that. What made it hard was when I did become successful. Yeah. Because they're like, oh shit, the pressure's really on yeah. now. Like now you, from other people's standpoints, have made it. Now you got to keep it. Now you got to sustain it. Now you got to cultivate it and grow it. And I, sometimes it's like, I wish I had not exceed, achieved certain levels of success because it wouldn't be as much pressure, but now the pressure that I'm balancing now and still a work in progress is, you know, not being so concerned about if it all falls apart, it falls apart. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the journey, but do everything you can to keep it up. Right. So. <clears throat> I think that uh, as gay, young gay boys growing up, I know for me, I think probably later in my life because I was uh, a Nice little fuck up when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for me though. A nice little fuck up. Yeah, I was a good little fuck up in school when I was growing up. But for me. Were you a bully? The, at, hell no. I got bullied. <laughs> a bully? No. But I was always at the mouth though. That's always a little gay boy's defense. But I think for me though, it, the fact that I was gay and different made me want to excel, excel in so many other areas of my life to make up for that very bad thing of right. being gay. Like if I excel in this area, this area, this area, I can make everybody proud or maybe they'll overlook the fact that I'm not straight. And then there comes the expectations that they yeah. have. Well, oh, he's a superstar in school. Or, or that we put on ourselves. Exactly. We put I on ourselves. We internalize we're it. Because we're trying to make up for that thing that we think is so it's bad true. about us that we try to be great in all other areas. And I also think that attributes to 
body image and how we can be a little bit obsessed with our bodies, trying to be so perfect, that fear of rejection and not being good enough. I think that, because uh, I, I, I see a lot of the same patterns in the gay community. And I did a lot of that. I did a lot of younger feeling ashamed of how I felt in my sexuality and struggling with it. So I was like, if I'm great at these yeah. five or six things, then this isn't so bad. It's forgivable. Yeah, it's, like, it's almost like I'm, I'm searching for you to validate me here. Right. So if and when you find out about this, you won't abandon or feel right. like I'm not worthwhile. Right, exactly, because you make it's a lot of money about, about five degrees. Yeah. Exactly what yeah, it is. Yeah, that, that is what it is. Or, or you use it as a crutch. So if someone says, oh, I heard you were gay. Oh, but I have this and right. I have that. Exactly. So, but if you, you ain't got no house, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't got no car. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Really sad. I wish, I wish we as a community, especially to the younger folks out there, um, can re hear what we're saying and then change that mode of thinking. Absolutely. You know, I think I, it's getting better, though. For the younger community, I think they have a lot more examples. Mm -hmm. um, people are talking about it more, especially with the whole Supreme Court ruling and everything. Mm -hmm. I do think that their walk is going to be a lot different from ours. So I'm, I'm real proud of how far we came yeah. since we've been here. We got a ways to go, but we're definitely yeah, much further we're definitely on the up and up. But so we'll be back. Take this message from our sponsors, and we're going to wrap up this interview with Brian. <laughs> To all you lovers out there, it's Juan and G. <laughs> and we thought this was a great opportunity to encourage all of you lovers out there, all of you lovers out there, to take, go deeper into your relationship and take part in the Emory Strong Together campaign. Yeah, you know, oftentimes, you know, you worry about your physical fitness, your six pack abs, mm -hmm. your bulging biceps, but once you get into a relationship, you know, your sexual health kind of takes a back burner for some people. And we want to send a message out to you to let you know that sexual health is just as important as your physical fitness. Exactly. So take responsibility for each other's health, go deeper into your relationship, and go to StrongerTogether.us and take part into the campaign. And if you're eligible, you could even receive $80 for your time. Once again, that website is StrongerTogether.us. That's StrongerTogether.us. Go deeper. Peace. <laughs> But we are back here on Love Works with our Bachelor of the Month for July, Mr. Fireworks himself. That's going to be his new nickname from now on. I'm going to call you that, all right? I'm never going to wear this shirt. Never going to call you Fireworks. Even though it's Tyler, it's not Fireworks. It's just so reminiscent of it. Brian Hinton. Brian Hinton. So, Brian, tell everybody, what do you do for a living? What do you enjoy out of life? You know, give us those, you know, basic dating questions. Uh, what do I do for a living? I work in consulting. Mm -hmm. um, what in industry? Uh, we do all, all facets of consulting. So we try to just look at small businesses and also large businesses and figure out how can we make you more efficient, more profitable, more lean as an organization. Mm -hmm. So we really try to step in there and help make things better for the organization. So you go into the organization and you tell them what their problems are and how they can make it better and you fix it. No, we help them identify areas that they want to improve and we provide solutions. Is that, is that, does that come natural for you? Yeah. I mean, so I, do you, does that carry on into your relationships? <laughs> what are you asking exactly? Right. You know, because I know a lot of people, a lot of people like to find, when they're dating, they like to find projects. They find somebody, that oh they have a lot of potential but I can do so I can really really help them and come in and say I them. can help them identify issues that they want to improve <laughs> and then provide I get paid to do that I don't <laughs> like to do it personally I'm, I'm actually really bad at that like I don't like projects if I feel like there's a lot of internal work you have to do yeah. I rather you work on doing that solo yeah. and then when you get there then you can connect okay I heard that so is your you're, um, <laughs> well, I won't. You want to say something? No, never mind. You sure? Yep. It was going to be too much. I was going to have a Tyra Banks moment. You know how she always brings We're it back to the for you. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, um, oh shit, I lost my train of thought. Oh, so is that your passion? Like what he does for a living? Is that your passion? I think that I enjoy what I do. I won't say that it's probably my passion. I have a passion for people in general. And any way I can give back and help, I like it. But I won't say that corporate America is what I want to do for the rest of my life. What do you want to do for the rest of your life? 
in an ideal world, if I didn't have to worry about responsibilities, money, all that stuff, I would go to culinary school. I would become really? a chef, and I would really? open up my own restaurant. So why haven't you? Just do it. Do it. You should do it. I could go all the time. You guys just never show you just up. Just never had, had any. That is not true. No, no. I won't say you never show up, but you don't show up in a timely fashion when the food is there. Oh, We're not going to get into this. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so I'm mad. I'm mad. I even brought it up. Right. <laughs> no, I do love cooking. I, I love. Cooking. I did not know that. That's an interesting <laughs> fact. You hear that, folks? You don't know. <laughs> so tell everybody what you do by night. <laughs> what do I do by night? Are you a man of the night? I because sleep. I know you have a night. Are you a man of the night? I don't know. He said I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know that you, well, you know how people do things by day, but you also are very involved in the community. You have a passion for the community, so I just kind of wanted you to kind of share some of your community uh, initiatives. I do. Um, I, I try to be involved with the community with mentorship. But from, a, I guess, our community standpoint, I do a lot of events and a lot of, I hate to use the term promotions, mm -hmm. only because promotions get such a negative stigma mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Sometimes rightfully so, right. but I, I try That's to- another conversation. Another conversation, <laughs> but I, I try to provide opportunities and events that we may not get all the time to bring people together, to connect people, and to do something positive for our community. Okay, and so let me ask you this question. What do you want our, uh, our viewing audience to walk away from this interview? What impression do they want, you want them to have of you, hopefully? Well, I hope that I have been transparent. Okay. You know, I think that sometimes having notoriety, people have an opinion of you mm -hmm. that's not based on fact, it's based on perception. Mm -hmm. So I hope that I have been honest, I've been transparent, and I've been open enough so people have a better feel for who I am. And I hope that from this, someone takes something positive from it. Right. So. Well, I will say this. I, I feel like you have achieved that goal because mm -hmm. I am walking away from this conversation with a better impression of who Brian is on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a level that I can appreciate. So I do thank you. Thank yeah, you I that. feel like I know you. I know you better, so yeah. I can appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So tell everybody this hot sizzling firecracker bachelor of the month. How do they get in touch with Brian Hinton? Where are your social media sites? How can they reach you if they wanted to holler? If you want to share that. If he doesn't share it, I'll share it. You're about to hit us up asking. What actually since you mentioned that? No, no, I'm, I'm not going to have <laughs> uh, My, uh, I have to think about it. My Facebook name is B. Sean Hinton. B S E A N H I N T O N. We'll put, we'll put it on the screen. We will. I just want to make sure that's correct. And to be honest with you, I don't, because I just joined Instagram not okay. too long ago. I don't even know. I think it's like Mr. B H P. We'll look it up. Yeah. I, I don't know. And I just got Twitter last week, so I don't even know what that well, is. Well, you know what the good thing about that is? That means he don't have a whole lot of followers right now, so as soon as you send a mention, he'll <laughs> see that message come up. <laughs> right. But thank you again, Brian, for joining us. We definitely enjoyed the conversation. Absolutely. Um, I mean, this has been great. I mean, I, I want to talk to you more. But I know. <laughs> you're going to have to think of some other stuff to talk to you about. But thank you again. Please hit this guy up. He's a great guy, a uh, good friend of ours, and I can't say enough great things about you, although you are passive aggressive. <laughs> thank you guys for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you guys for watching. Please keep sharing our videos. If you have any questions, if you have any nominations for Bachelor of the Month, send it to us, loveworks at wannag.com. We love you. We love Peace. you all. That was so good! <laughs> <laughs> I hope it was good.